everything that they thought that they needed from other people doesn't even make them happy because the key thing in self-love is loving self. time it is if you are new to the channel welcome my name is lisa marie i am the host of season dialogue and we're gonna have some fun if you like what you've heard if you like the vibes you know you know what to do like subscribe comment if you need to we are a space full of love kindness good vibes peace and all of that good stuff all right y'all ready let's do it i want to talk about self-love and I want to talk about why it is so important that we get to a point in a place where we are loving ourselves, number one, as the primary, and that we are not incorporating having people in our lives to serve for our own happiness. To me, that's important because our deficiencies and our inadequacies sometimes take People who are not self-sufficient, who don't love all aspects of themselves, will go into relationships and, re and friendships wanting and needing those deficiencies through other people, wanting to be fulfilled in ways in which they can't provide for themselves. So this expectation for others to provide it for them, what happens is, first of all, you are doing too much when it comes to others, not even thinking about their feelings and how much it takes for them to fulfill the obligations and inadequacies that you have. But you also push people away because there is so much that you expect and you're not even giving to yourself. And then at the end, what most people find is that everything that they thought that they needed from other people doesn't even make them happy because the key thing in self-love is loving self there is no substitute for you there is no substitute for the care in which you can provide for yourself there is no substitute when it comes to the way in which you can love and honor yourself people should be an addition they should not be the filling point to your inadequacies they should be that plus never zero plus one is that one right it is one plus one is two and you are stronger okay self-love also means you know moving from a point in which you now looked at the inadequacies and the difficulties that you're having with yourself and loving hugging and just you know sitting in that space of just honoring who you are whether it was that you went through a moment or a period in which you didn't like yourself there are various reasons I mean we can we can name them but when you got to a point where the maybe the decisions that you made maybe the way in which you were showing up to other people um, self-realization made you feel that you didn't love yourself maybe there was a part of your appearance something that you didn't like on your face or your body that made you not love yourself in entirety and maybe it was just again some decisions that just threw you off course and made you stumble and you set in a point of contention and not loving yourself. The part of self-love is getting to a point where you realize, okay, I've, I've gone there. I've done, I've done that. I've seen myself in the mirror, whether it is a physical scene that I'm looking at myself and the things that I didn't like about myself, I am starting to appreciate it now because it is what makes me unique, right? Or how we are looking at ourselves in the, you know, inside the spiritual sense of this is the way in which I operated with people. This is the way in which I operated with myself. And now that I see that that part of me I didn't like, I am coming tenfold and I'm seeing the beauty of what I could be on the outside of not being the way I operated. So now I serve in my highest self and highest capacity with love. I also want to say this as well. 
I have found, because I don't want to be dismissive on this, I have also found that for me, it doesn't speak for everyone else. Everyone is at a different place. Everyone is at a different level. That's not the same. My love for myself and my self-love comes from a point in which I understand that God made me just the way that he wanted to make me and that I cannot align to and be a mirror to other people. I am humbled that God made me how I am. And so maybe sometimes if we put ourselves in the biblical sense of the understanding that God knows and honors all and that he made and created us in his own image for his own knowing that we accept what is now on a more spiritual sense we have to take account of how we show up and who we are and how we are and we have to tweak it we're not perfect that's that's the thing about being people we're we're not perfect there are some things that we have to tweak but at the end it's how do i really feel about myself Do I love that aspect of myself or do I need a little bit more working into getting to where I need to go? Self-love is just appreciating, number one, the journey that you've gone through and appreciating, you know, how in which you have moved from one place to the next and you see the growth within yourself. People see the growth within yourself. Self-love is also embodying all aspects of just who we are from the past, the traumas that we may have set with and acknowledged, the pain that we felt, and then a coming out of appreciating that journey and loving how it looks to us now. Self-love is continuing to nurture the parts of ourselves that needs to be nurtured and accepting that now that you are at the peak of whatever it is that you have changed and rearranged in your life that you decide to stay there because it feels oh so good self-love is not it is not leaning on another individual to fill in the inadequacies and the deficiencies that you have with yourself that is not self-love baby Because self-love means self. And when we are needing and wanting, pleading, desiring for others to fulfill the things that we don't have within ourselves, honestly, we are looking for others to take control of the way in which we behave and also wanting to be in control of the way in which we need them to behave it's just like having a meeting and you meet someone for the first time and you say to them listen this is my proposal to you I don't have such and such I don't have xyz I don't have these things for myself but what I want you to do is I want you to give me all of those things. And by doing so, I'll be happy. How does that sound to you? That sounds a little ludicrous, don't it? A little crazy. The person on the other end is going to be like, nah, that's not how it works. That's not how partnership works. That's not how friendship works. That's not how a relationship works. But essentially, that is what you are saying when you are serving a person with all of the things that you require, but not able to have those things to yourself, you're setting the precedence, number one, to be disappointed from the gate. And you are setting the precedence to disappoint them as well. If I don't have anything to give, number one, to myself, and if I don't have anything to give to someone else, then I am not whole. I am inadequate to even request anything from anyone. I don't have anything to give to myself and I don't have anything to give to you. Therefore, I need to work on how I love and care for me. That is why broken friendships and broken relationships occur. People have these high expectations on the way in which people are supposed to receive them 
And what happens is most often you are wearing these folks out. You are wearing them out on your expectations. And really at the end, you're not happy. It doesn't matter what people give you. It doesn't matter how many times you raise the bar with your expectations. If you can't give it to yourself, you have nothing. Absolutely nothing. When we speak of self-care also, you know, we are embodying. Today, I want to read a book that is helpful for my mental psyche. I, I want to learn something that's going to help me advance and learn. Um, self-care can be misconstrued as a lot of things. What it's not to me, and this may be different, so hear me out. Self-care for me doesn't mean um, getting my, my my hair done every week. I don't get my hair do, done anyway, but I'm just saying. It's not getting my hair done. Like, you know, that's a maintenance thing. It's not getting my nails done. That's a maintenance thing. Self-care for me means that I am pouring something into myself that's going to help me out in the long run. So I want to read a book. I want to read a book so that I can learn more about what it is that I need to learn about life or subjects or something that is going to, you know, enhance my knowledge. Um, I need to take a walk, a walk by myself. No, not only is it helping me physically, you know, with my physical health, but it gives me time away from all of the noise and everything that is in life. And I am able to be as one. I have time to think. In thinking with intentional thoughts, to me, that's self-serving. So that is self-love. Self-love could also be, you know, getting, you know, the time and the moment, the opportunity to take me a nice little bath, you know, with some bubbles and some smell good. Give me a little, you know, some candles, some smell good candles and have a moment of rest and relaxation sitting in the moment of the ambience of peace and just knowing like I am loving all over myself and I'm giving myself a treat it's not necessarily maintenance I mean we bathe every single day but it's the difference of the sitting of the candles and the bubbles and the smell good and the peace like it's adding something to it that to me is what I consider self-care or even you know dedicating some months to a program of fitness where I love who I am and I love how I show up, but I want to enhance it. I want to, I want to look toned, you know, I want to look a little bit better. So I'm giving that gift to myself so that I can feel a little bit better about my physical structure and the way in which I see myself. I hope that I am giving you a comparison to what I consider as self-care. And um, the notion of what self-care is that has been thrown out there. And if getting your hair done and it's, it's on an occasion, if that's your self-care goal, go for it. If getting your nails done on an occasion is your self-care, go for it. Be, but the, the key word in that is occasion. It's not something that you normally do for yourself. I couldn't say that that is maintenance if it's an occasional thing. Getting your toes done, getting a massage, you know, all of those things in occasion because you are giving that gift to yourself. I feel like that is self-care, not maintenance, not something that you do on a regular basis before you can care for self you have to lean into the understanding that number one you deserve to be cared for by you that no person no child outside people friends they can only give you so much but you have to self-serve within yourself you have to give yourself some things baby you gotta give yourself some things and if you are not there if you are not at that point I want you to take the time and the moments to actually jot it down and what is that inadequacy that you have within yourself and then that presents you with the opportunity to work on it and then sometimes even taking the initiative to go beyond what you've always done let's say a parent because listen we get lost a parent you're a mother 
and all of your time is spent towards making sure your kids get from A to B, you're, you're helping them study, all of your time is incorporated into your children. And if you are married, children and mate, but you never took the time out for yourself, you took that moment and you decided today on a Wednesday, on a Thursday, on a Friday, I'm speaking up for myself. This is the moment in which I need for me and I'm going to do something new and I'm going to initiate self-care. Even if it's sitting on the side of the bed and getting your thoughts together, baby, that is self-care because it's something that you haven't given yourself in a while. You need to get yourself together, your thoughts you know, the space to just sit there and not worry about anything. Ain't no mom, nobody calling mama. Okay. <laughs> it's not an emergency. You're just wrapping yourself up in the time of being with you. And I don't want to, um, I don't want to not say this as well. Let's start incorporating the book. Let's start incorporating the Bible in the moments in which you are sitting to yourself and you, you're processing your thoughts. If it hasn't been a habit to you, if there is a, 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 something that you may be going through, I love the Bibles in which you can um, look at the messages in which you can point to through a verse and so if you are dealing with grief and loss, if you are dealing with um, sadness, overworked, marriage, thumb through the book, read you some verses and some passages, align yourself with the word of God. That to me is self-love as well. It's self-serving also because it's knowing that God really made us in the image that he wanted for us we're human so therefore it's some things that we sit on not entirely loving ourselves but if you are one who is lacking you know in the biblical sense and need a word open up the book okay and get you some some good old feeding today's episode was about self-love we all have inadequacies. We all have deficiencies, but never think that those things that you are missing should be gained and put into you by other people. Self-love is self first. In order for me to receive, I have to give to me first. And self-love is occasional things that we do to just give ourselves a boost of you are loved. And then it becomes a way of life in which you understand that you can operate on that medium of incorporating some things that are valuable for you. I hope it was good for you. I hope you learned some things. I hope that you set in the space of understanding and knowing if it was a good message for you, like the video, comment below, and also subscribe to my channel. I ain't gonna talk no more. That was it. I'll see you the next time. All right, peace.